Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Pico trade and how many YouTubers either knew or should have known it was a scam and they got out. Uh, by meaning get out, they received a lot of free points and they spent all the free points as I will show you later on expeditions while promoting the product uh, saying that they traded a lot of cards but the cards they were trading were either to friends and or a very low value. So I have evidence of all this. I have evidence that the mana source spent the majority of his Pico trade points. And the math formula is very easy. It's simple. Just like BitConnect, BitConnect you got points and you had lots and lots of uh, payouts. But it was a scam. There was actually nothing behind it. You can no longer trade a BitConnect coin because the whole trade exchange has been shut down. And now all these people on YouTube that were promoting this product are now being investigated because they made a lot of money. Um, it's very easy to make money if you know that the scam, it is a scam and you treat and act like it is a scam and you know that it's time to get out, it's time to get out. So before we begin with the Pico trade and other people, um, let's take a look at BitConnect. Uh, BitConnect was a Ponzi scheme. I mean, it was suspected of being a Ponzi scheme, just like Pico Trade. You can't really use. It's hard to prove, but when you look, when it talks and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And here you have a plunging sixty-five percent in value. That sounds very familiar because one. 100 Pico points is now worth 33, 33 cents. So that's exactly 65 or very close to 65 cent percent in value. Uh, the CEO of Pico Trades, Eric Freytag, said that 100 Pico points would always trade at a dollar. That was not true. Just like this big connect, it fell. So I want you to look at this. Uh, this is Wedge's profile. He currently has 4,134 coins or Pico points left. He began with a minimal, which I'll show you and prove to you, of 15, $15,000, which is equivalent to, what was that at the time? 150, no. Wow, it's even more points. I'm trying to calculate. It cannot possibly be. So the math is very simple, but I, it's just such a big number. 300 times 5,000, yeah, it's 1.5 million. Whoa. $1.5 million of just referral bonuses. Not additional payment from PucoTrade. Not additional, and I would love to see his books on this because that is, you did make income. That is a type of income when you're changing them into cards. Now, these are the cards that he's trading. He sent 80 trades. Again, this guy has 1.5 million points. And now he's down to 4,000. And he only sent 80 times. He sent foundries and spreading seas. Look at the spreading seas. It's 111 points. And blood crypts. Uh, you can see that it's typically to the same person. And it's actually to another YouTuber. So why are they trading on this platform? Yeah, Rance is a YouTuber who is one of his really, really good friends. So he's trading on PicoTrade to another YouTuber and then promoting it on Twitter as if he's doing a real trade. Now this is what he's trading away. This is what he's trading away. He's either trading away very low value cards like Spreading Seas and Foundry, which was 48 cents at the time, or he's trading cards to his friends. But what is he trading after? What, what did 1.5 million points, a minimal, my best estimate was they probably gave him another 1 million on top for signing up 5,000 people. What did he trade for? How, why is, does he only have 4,000 points? And here he says, all of the points on this account will be used to help upgrade the channel equipment and keep the channel alive. So he's already telling you that, yes, I understand these points are free and I received 2 million, 2.5 million points and I'm going to spend it all on helping my channel. 
So he's trading really, really, he traded 80 times or 80 cards he traded, uh, 80 trades, whatever that is, cards or trades. And they're either a very low value cards or they're to his friends. Uh, he's even done articles in partnership with uh, decks and he tells you how to buy, essentially buy this deck with Pico points. So they are very tied in. I don't want you to feel like I'm making this stuff up. They are, they are tied together, and they should go. They go to bed. At the, they go to the same bed, and you should wake up in the same bed. You shouldn't run away at the middle of the night. You made your bed. Now lay in it. So uh, let's take a look at the article and some of the promotion that they have done together on this program again. My argument is not that Wedge knew the whole time. My argument is he should have known, which is just as valid of an argument in a legal sense. Check it out. We all know that Pico Trade is great for getting cards with which to build our decks. Now other people are recognizing just that and promoting us after they've been paid and sponsored, right? The manor source, da, da, da. Uh, what's unique about this presentation is that the presenter wedge makes sure he lets you know how much each of the cards cost and Pico points. So before he was telling you to buy the uh, Creeping Tar Pits for $15 for TCG player, he was telling you to buy cards and Pico points. Uh, wedge makes sure that you, he lets you know each value. That's because he bought it. So here is the mana sources deck. So at the time he was promoting, he was creating a deck and then telling you to buy on Puka. As you can see from the image, yeah, that's his logo. That's the deck. And that is a Puka little antelope that needs to be eaten alive. So he is very much tied into it. You don't think anyone in Puka told him that it was going to sink before he made his video. Uh, do, you, do you not think any content creators who are being paid with Puka points reached out to him? Let me tell you the monthly magic box. The only reason it hit my radar was because Tolarian mentioned it in a comment. Not me. And his what he said was his subscribers are worried. The mana source knows even at this time, Wedges is contagious. And even if you think you know everything about how to trade on Pico Trade, it's still a good view. Here is the Mana Sources Guide to Pico Trade. So you, you're in a situation which, in my opinion, you you should know, or you do you should know at some point in time before you make the video condemning them for their UI rather than their point system that you have been part of a scam. And those points that you have received, those 1.5 million minimal points up to, I think, at least 2.5 million, those things were taken from your subscribers, directly from your subscribers. Somebody is held, has to hold the bag. Someone takes a loss. There is This is a net zero-sum game. Not everyone can win. There are winners like Wedge, and there are losers like his subscribers. And no matter, and here's the crazy part, uh, just this is something that psychologically happens with Bernie Madoff victims and stuff. They're too proud to say that they were victims and they actually end up supporting the channel even more for the, even the next big scam, which later we would see become uh, medical insurance related. And it is this attachment uh, because it's kind of like in for, you know, in for a drop of blood, in for a pint, in for a gallon. Uh, if you bleed a little bit, what's bleeding some more? But I just wanted to make this video to uh, emphasize that this is something that happens in our community. But in the outside realm, uh, so let's get to the conclusion. In the outside realm, these people, these YouTubers promoting BitConnect, they're all being, they all have to testify or they have escaped the country. A lot of them are no longer in the country anymore. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're still vlogging and YouTubing, but they, are no longer in the US because uh, they understand that criminal proceedings will be processed against them. Um, in fact, one of them actually came back to US and they arrested him on the spot or they investigated him on the spot. I don't know if that was made up or he just wanted views, but it was a very big deal in the crypto community. So you had a lot of people promoting a product they knew was a scam or 
Ponzi-like pyramid, and they are all now being punished. But in magic, you can cheat, and you don't go cheating in magic is like stealing because everyone put in their money into a pool, and you're expecting that everyone plays fair, and then you have an equal opportunity to win that money. I know it's never framed as gambling, right? Because oh my goodness, how could we frame it as gambling, right? It would destroy all of magic, pretty much. But it's very similar. And someone who cheats, like Alex Bocchini, he takes your power nine, takes your $10,000. That's stealing. If you stole $10,000 from the uh, Texas lottery or the, Fed the state lottery, you would go to jail for a really long time. But in Magic the Gathering, you can steal $10,000 and power nine and no one even cares. You'll be back in 18 months anyway, so good luck. I mean, great. That was your salary for 18 months. Congrats. Um, not only does people who steal stuff and cheat, they get promoted. Um, I would tell you that Alex's fiance or significant other is very popular in the Magic community. So he's being promoted by Wizard of Coast time and time again. I guarantee you they know of that relationship and they approve of Alex's behavior. And I would even suspect, um, at very low percentage, but this might be true, that they encourage Alex to cheat because they give him the villain they've always wanted. An easily controllable villain. MTG headquarters is not easy to control. Alex is easy to control because you can always ban him and let him back in. So he'll always be on good behavior and then bad behavior and good behavior because you can ban him and take away his livelihood. So here's the famous article by the CEO. The CEO. Over the last few days, around 5,000 new members have registered with the new Pico account, many of you arriving by way of recommendation from the mana source. On behalf of the Pico Trade community all over, and the Pico Trade team based in Oakland, California, welcome to. So, if you signed 5,000 people and the minimal bonus referral bonus you get, the minimal is $3 or 300 points a person, that's 1.5 million points. The man of source doesn't have 1.5 million in his account. He didn't trade away at 1.5 million. How insane is this? He emptied out. Let's say he had 4,000. What's that? 4,000 divided by 100. That's 40 bucks. So pretty much he emptied out $15,000 from his subscriber account before it went belly up. Otherwise, the, the points would still be in his account. No? Think about that for a moment. He emptied out during the best time before he made a video, which would then create a panic in the market. And then, you know, Tolarian created his video, I think a day or two later, which created a second panic in the market. They had all emptied out their accounts. Everyone account was empty. And the best way you can the best way you can see what happened is the way that he frames it. All Puka points on this account are meant to improve my channel. What was he trading for? He was trading for expeditions. He emptied out fifteen thousand dollars in expeditions and other high end cards he could resell. Did he report this on his taxes? Probably not. Um, I would I would very much like love to see uh, some. There's no accountability, and when someone like me holds someone accountable on in Magic, they just say you're a hater, bro. And this is not real life. If he had done this, and instead of Puka points, which is very similar to crypto, if you think about it, is and he did this with BitConnect, he would be in jail or at the very least investigated at this point. And charges would be filed. Because they would want to know, okay, how many people did you sign up? How many trades did you do? Oh, you traded only with your friends or you only traded cards that were very low value, but then you received cards that were Era Mesa Expeditions. This was a amazing scam for these people. They made out like rabbits. You know, they made out like bank robbers and had this happen in real life. You know, I that's why when you talk about MTG finance and you talk about all these experts and these smart people who are always criticizing me, 
The reason they don't, a lot of people say this. Oh, if you're really good at MTG Finance, you should do real stock. No, you should not. Because the rules that you're applying in MTG Finance, buyouts, uh, artificial inflation, all of this stuff can get you arrested in the real life. Like the way that you play magic by stealing and cheating and the, you know, adding cards to your hand, drawing extra cards. Try that in a casino. Try that at a casino rather than your Friday Night Magic or your GP. You try that at GP, you get caught, hand slap. You'll be back in no time. And you get to keep your prizes. You try that at casino, they break your legs. Right? That's the worst. I mean, that is the ideal outcome that you come out with some type of leg, right? Uh, I mean, it is night and day. And this is why when you talk about a BitConnect, a real-life scam, and the implications that are now happening... And you talk about Pico Trade. No one in Pico Trade is punished. The CEO is not punished for lying about the hundred points for a, a dollar. Will always be consistent. None. Nobody's punished for the massive deflation of this currency, which is on the level of BitConnect, right? At the time, and no one's punished for promoting something they know that they either knew or should have known was a scam to their subscriber base. But this video exists. So there you go. That's the only remnant. It's the only small punishment that can be applied to prevent future misbehavior is if I make this video, I explain the sides, I tell you exactly what it is. This dude had 1.5 million points. Where is the blanking points? Where did the points go? They went into expeditions that his subscribers traded to, for, to him. Again, he didn't pay anything into the system. I've shown you that. He's only traded 80 times total. And most of the trades, it looks like it's for either to his friends or for very, very little value cards. For comments. How many trades did he receive? And you know what? Pico Trade, if you open up that profile to me, if you oh, let me know what he traded for, because I know you have the records. I can't find it. I know you have the records of what he actually traded at. I will never make another video about you again. Bye, guys.